All right, so here we have a piston cylinder assembly. We have some givens for the gas inside of this piston cylinder assembly. And of course the piston is sealing off this chamber right over here. And this piston is actually gonna travel upwards because we're told that the gas expands. So you have an initial volume of one meter cubed or uh, a 10th of a meter cubed. And then it's going to rate, this cylinder is going to raise and expand the gas to 0.12 meters cubed. So once again, we have a constant pressure expansion from process one to two. So what that means is that P1 is gonna be equal to P2 for the gas and V2 or volume two is going to be greater than V1 due to this word expansion. Now, two things we're asked to find in part A is, or are the work of the gas in kilojoules and the heat transfer of the gas also in kilojoules. Now, very simply remember that work is equal to the integral from V1 to V2, those are volumes, P dV, P is pressure. So in our case here, we have the work of the gas is equal to V1, which is 0 0.1, to V2, which is 0 0.12 meters cubed. And then pressure we're given as two bar but we want to make sure that we keep that in kilopascals. So it's going to be equal to 200 kilopascals dV. Now, if you do this out, you'll have 200 times 0 0.12 minus 0 0.1. And that's going to result with four kilojoules. And that work is done by the gas because the four is a positive number which makes sense because it's pushing this piston upwards. All right, so now we have to find that heat transfer of that gas. We're probably going to apply the first law of thermodynamics here, which just states that the change in energy, total energy, is going to be equal to the heat transfer minus the work. And if you break this down a little bit further, you'll have that the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy it's going to be equal to the heat transfer minus the work. So we can neglect kinetic energy and potential energy, and you'll have that the internal energy or change in internal energy is going to be equal to heat transfer minus work. So we have our heat transfer of the gas being equal to the work plus the change in internal energy, which is simply going to be equal to 4 kilojoules plus 0 0.25 kilojoules is the uh, change in internal energy as given by the problem. And that's gonna be equal to 4.25 kilojoules. Now for part B, we're asked to find the work and change in potential energy. And this time we're going to be looking at the piston as a system rather than the gas. So if we go ahead and draw a free body diagram of the piston and the forces acting on the piston, we have up top, we have atmospheric pressure, obviously across the entire area of the piston. And then underneath, we have that pressure of gas expanding, pushing the piston upwards, again, across the entire area of the piston. And then lastly, you just have the, the uh, weight of the piston just trying to pull it back down. Now, the reason we're using a free body diagram is because we need to find that resultant force for the formula of work equals force times displacement. So this is just another uh, formula from physics. We're going to use it in this instance here um, because we have a change in volume. So with some manipulation between area and volume, we should be able to find that distance because this piston ascends. And then we're going to use our three forces here to find the net force. So in order to do the sum of the forces on this piston free body diagram, we have to make sure that everything is consistent in terms of units. So right over here, we have the weight of the piston, which is just a force mass times gravity. It would give you newtons, which would not be equal to the uh, unit for pressure here, which would give you bar or kilopascals. So we need to convert this pressure into a force. So to do that, just remember that you multiply pressure by area and you'll get a force. So in other words, this FATM is just the resultant force by the atmospheric pressure acting on the piston and similarly, this F gas is just going to be the resultant force of the gas acting on the piston. So now if you do the sum of the forces in the Y direction, with the Y direction being positive upwards, you'll have the sum of the forces in the Y direction 
are equal to the force of gas, which is pointing upwards, minus the force of atmospheric pressure, minus mg, which is just the weight of the piston. And all of that would be equal to zero in a system with equilibrium. Now the next step we want to do is solve for mg because that's the force of the piston acting on the gas. So it's going to be the uh, force done by the system in this case because the system is now the piston. So if you solve for mg, it'll simply be equal to the force of the gas minus the force of the atmospheric pressure which we can use these substitutions over here to the right to make it equal to the pressure of the gas times the area of the piston minus the pressure of the atmospheric pressure times, again, the area of the piston. Now, if we substitute this expression into the work, you'll have that the work is equal to the pressure of the gas times the area of the piston minus the pressure of the atmospheric pressure times, again, the area of the piston. And all of that is multiplied by the difference in elevation between the piston at its original position and the piston at its end position. Now the next thing we can do is factor out that area of the piston. You'll have that the work is equal to the pressure of the gas minus the pressure of the atmospheric pressure times area of the piston times change in elevation of the piston. So now I'm going to make a substitution because we don't have the area of the piston and we also don't have the change in elevation, but we do have the change in volume. And if you notice, you have a meter squared times a meter here, which gives you meters cubed, which is actually volume. So I'm going to substitute this expression here with V2 minus V1. And now with that substituted in, we do have all these values. So we can go ahead and start plugging in our numbers. So if you plug your numbers in, you'll have the pressure of the gas is 200 kilopascals minus the atmospheric pressure of 100 kilopascals times the volume change of 0.12 minus 0.1. And if you put this in your calculator, you'll have two kilojoules. And once again, that two kilojoules is worked on on the piston because we had to overcome that weight of the piston to make it actually travel upwards. So if you're looking for the work done by the piston, that would be equal to negative two kilojoules by the piston or two kilojoules on the piston. Okay, so last but not least, to find that potential energy, I'm gonna to try to fit it into this little box here. We're gonna use the energy balance once again, and we have that the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy is equal to heat transfer minus work. Now we're told a few things here. So at the start and at the end, we're going to have zero velocity, so kinetic energy can be canceled out. Also, we have a heat-resistant piston, so heat transfer can cancel out, and we're also going to cancel out the change in internal energy. The only energy that this piston is going to have is potential energy, and that's going to be equal to negative work. So we have change in potential energy is going to be equal to negative work. Now, we solved for two works here. We have two kilojoules of work done on the piston and then negative two kilojoules of work done by the piston. So we're gonna be using the work done by the piston in this case because the piston's gonna be looked at as the system in part B. So in here you substitute the change in potential energy being equal to negative, negative two kilojoules and that's gonna be equal to two kilojoules as your change in potential energy. 